My name is Jack. I'm watching random YouTube videos. I'm trying to ignore the fact it's not Christmas anymore. You are watching what I'm doing right now. It is very early in the morning. We are leaving for Salt Lake City. Oh my. This is very windy. You hungry? No. <laughs> what you, what's even open? Hi, can I please get a triple stack McGriddle? Of course. First you had to struggle for a long time. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, we made it to the Boyles's. Yeah. Here's Welcome Joshua Boyles. Yes. Uh, here's your Christmas tree. You didn't put any ornaments on it this year? Sure didn't. Mm. But you see the dark patch at the top? Yep. That's to represent the star. Oh. Oh. Yeah. All right. The star was so dense with love and happiness that it became a black hole. That's exactly right. And it's magic. sucking up all the light. A lot wow. of energy. Look at that kitty. That is dear Lord. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. She is the one true Lord. She's the reason why we celebrate Christmas, in fact. Oh. This cat is currently enjoying being bounced on my leg. I don't understand why it hasn't left yet. Oh no. Candles are flying. Wild. <laughs> oh. Nope. Well. Joshua Voiles, can I <laughs> interview you about how you went from having two vehicles to one vehicle? And a snowstorm hits, and the smarter part of my brain, the very, very tiny part of my brain that is smart, was like, you know, maybe you should wait a minute. But the snowstorm hit, driving too fast, listening to Jason Richardson at full blast. And I remember having that, I was on the freeway thinking, should probably slow down before this becomes untenable. You never know what's gonna happen. You're gonna tap the brake and you can start spiraling into a daze. And I was like, nah, f you, it's all right, we'll keep going, you know. Before you knew it, it started getting a little wobbly and I hit my brake. Uh, you're supposed to tap your brake in the snow and sort of manage your way to safety if you can. And instead, I sort of slammed my brake. Lovely. Yeah, and the fight or flight kicked in pretty heavy. My amygdala hijacked any common sense I had at that point. I sort of started swerving around. Then I was mostly concerned about getting nailed by the cars that were behind me because my car had slowed down so significantly. It was on the freeway. I ended up barreling over to the side, slammed against the median, and bounced back with my life intact and my wrist pretty severely f***ed up. I gave you a ring immediately as if you were gonna do anything. It's just kinda- I was in Portland at the time. Yeah, I was just like, you know, my, I was pretty shaken up and so I wanted to say, I love you in case I die now, I don't know. Anyway, and the car, man, I'm so grateful for that car, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd be even more grateful for a smarter brain, but God didn't grant everybody the winning lottery, so. I'm grateful for that car. I remember looking at that car and I said goodbye to it. This is a safe machine, man. You get behind that thing. When I drive this thing, it feels like a freaking paper doll. Like, I feel like I'm in a paper car driving this thing because of what that tank was like. And uh, I remember when I said farewell. I got like 8,000 out of the car. It wasn't too bad. Uh, $8,000? Yeah. It was 11000 actually. From your insurance? Yeah, they considered it. Uh, just t total, you know, they're, they're just total. They're like, yeah, they gave 11,000 for it. And when I said goodbye the day they came to grab it, I actually had an emotional moment with the car, which is not That's typical. Crazy. That's not typical of me to do that with a car. I can get sentimental about damn near everything, but a car that's just never, see, now we're all gonna die. This is how this begins. And I remember like getting teary-eyed and it's like, I, I thanked it. 
was like, thank you for sparing my life. And later on, I had this conversation with a guy that I hardly know. I told him about two or three near-death experiences that I've had. And he's like, dude, you've had all these interventions over and over again. The universe has stepped in and intervened on your behalf and said, hey, no, like Pulp Fiction, divine intervention. Mother I want you to appreciate this moment. What happened is a miracle, Vincent. I want you to acknowledge it, right? That kind of happened three times in my life, half an inch away from my jugular vein, you know, that thing. It's like, I think a message is being sent that you are living a dissonant life. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing here. It's like, this is your last chance, dude. We'll get this one, but if you keep up, you're dead, all right? And I started crying as he said this, you know, being the emotional guy that I am but it really resonated with something deep inside my body because I knew of all these things in my life that I felt like were misaligned based on my own ethics and values and so on. So when he said it, he was preaching to the choir, baby, and it sung in harmony. It was a symphony for the senses and my cells. Every single one of them was shaking and clapping in rapture just saying, listen to what this guy has to say. Maybe there is some redemption yet, like Scrooge and the redemption that was offered to him from the three spirits that haunted him in such a great beautiful, majestic story, they were like, this is your chance, this is your opportunity, seize the day, seize the moment. And so my life changed, and I appreciate that car, and I appreciate the guy who had the strange view that he had and shared it with me. That's why we have one car in the garage. <laughs> <laughs>Yeah. Can we talk about this jingle bus in front of us? Yeah, this, so this is the jingle bus. It's so <laughs> cute! <laughs>